you everyone for having me be a part of this important conversation. My name is Ade Tashagar. I'm a community engagement organizer in Richmond, California with the Safety Term Project. And I'd like to tell you a little bit of my own story. My own experience started with losing my father, which led me to a series of substance abuse and into the mass criminalization, mass incarceration system. I didn't understand how to get myself out of the system all while I was traumatized and system impacted. I didn't even understand the legal terms and what my responsibilities were because I had a public defender that was not informed and ready for my case. I didn't understand what my own recognizance or what a warrant meant upon my release. The lack of understanding led me to multiple arrests around missing court. However, because of my substance use and my trauma that was never addressed, every time I was arrested, it was for a different substance that I had with me, which gave the police motive to say I was trafficking drugs. The police controlled my narrative to fit their intent. At the time of my arrest, I was a successful timeshare manager working full-time, all impacted and suffering from trauma. I almost got deported during this ordeal because ICE was given access to me without my public defender's knowledge or mine. ICE asked about where the drugs were coming from and I stated that I wasn't cooperating and that I wasn't snitching on anybody because I feared for my life. I refused to cooperate, which led me to miss serving full time in their facility and where I lost opportunities to go home on house arrest. Hopefully, my story will demonstrate the critical need for systems of care and not further criminalization of individuals. I don't believe there's no way that we can rehabilitate ourselves while inside the way our systems are set up currently without clear, strong policies in place. It should not be at the discretion of correctional officers. Incarcerated people are at the bottom of the barrel in this country, as I've witnessed. We are judged, discriminated against, pushed aside, mistreated, especially women and gender nonconforming individuals in our country and in our systems. I found out that arresting people is a business in the United States. It's not a system of change or a system of care. The root of policing comes from chattel slavery and catching slaves. It's hard as a black woman born in Africa, raised in America, to have faith in the system and the people that are running it and are upholding it. I believe the mass criminalization system was created by design and we have to call it out for what it is. The system extracts people and puts them in jail for trauma, for addiction, for being poor. We have to stop arresting trauma. We have policies from the 1980s where we are seeing the consequences of the war on drugs now. We need structures for mass liberation and care, not harm and further criminalization. I'd like to give you guys an example. In 2020, in an effort to address COVID-19, the pandemic, inside the state's prisons, the CDCR implemented emergency measures to protect all those who live and work in our state prisons and the community at large by expediting the release of almost 3,500 individuals, serving a sentence for nonviolent offenses. Well, about 30 of those individuals were from Contra Costa County. And if they needed immediate housing, immediate employment, our system was not set up to a system. This is a failure of our system and the complete lack of care for formerly incarcerated individuals once they come out. We are fighting for mass liberation. We need to educate people on the budget of the mass punishment system. We can begin to build a system of care. Thank you. For me, I just think that if you're spending $30 billion incarcerating people, you should spend $30 billion um, into their healing and uh, reintegration and also support them coming back into being a productive citizen. So, you know, if we're making money off of incarcerating people, let's make money off of healing people. I mean, really healing people and making sure that their basic needs are met. Um, and one of those basic needs is definitely trauma healing, housing, education, um, employment, all of these things should be really a right. Um, and the way our system currently is, is once you get incarcerated, you don't have any more rights. 
So we need to take a look at that too. So as far as I'm concerned, 30 billion for incarceration, 30 billion for reintegration. Uh, you know, I like to share a quote from our executive director whenever I ask her this question about red states and whatnot. And what she said was, we are not outnumbered, we are out organized. And one thing that we can learn about red states is, is that they organize, right? And they show up and um, they turn out the votes. And I think my response to the question is, is that the poor people, the people that are disenfranchised in red states need starts to organize. They need to start to organize based on values and issues. And if they start to do that, and I think we can also find alignment and a bridge nationwide, if we can start doing that and stop, um, you know, just stop with the red state and blue state and really focus on the people and at the root causes of all of our issues, which, you know, if you dig deep enough, you will see these are basic needs is what we need in this country. And so to be met. Mm -hmm.